I try not to focus on equipment too much on this channel. I do make reviews, I do talk about equipment once in a while, but for my personal photography, I've been trying to minimize the amount of equipment that I own, the amount of equipment that I think about, to simplify things and make photography much more simple, much more enjoyable. But once in a while, I do like to think about camera equipment. As much as I promote not thinking too much about equipment, Equipment is exciting and I do think about it once in a while. So in this video, I'm going to talk about my dream cameras, cameras that I wish I could own now, cameras that I might own in the future, and cameras that don't exist yet that I wish camera manufacturers would make. Before we start, I just wanna ask you guys to participate. Leave your dream cameras in the comment box down below. I'll check those out, I'll comment. Uh, and hopefully we can start a discussion. So in this video, I'm going to break down my dream cameras into three categories. One is my dream personal camera kit. Second is my dream, I guess, professional camera kit. I'm not a super busy professional photographer, so I don't necessarily need this type of equipment, but it would be cool to have. And the third is my dream camera in terms of what does not exist yet in the market and something that I wish they would make. So let's start off with my dream personal kit, the camera or cameras that I would like to carry around with me on a daily basis, a camera that I would really enjoy using, have fun using, and a camera that is almost more than just the pictures that it comes out with, it's about the feeling, the experience, of shooting that camera. And the answer to this is simple, it's Leica. I've owned several Leicas in the past. I've owned three, I've owned an M3, I've owned an M4P and an M4 II, two similar cameras um, that were created one after the other. And all three of those cameras were amazing shooting experiences. And honestly, I wish I had never sold those cameras. Maybe the M4 II I would have sold, but the M4P was mint it was untouched unscratched unblemished and i sold it for a very very good price and the m3 i bought it for a steal i bought it for i think 700 dollars for the body and the lens and i sold both for almost two thousand dollars so i was in college at that time and it was a good deal to sell those cameras they haven't really risen too much in price so i can always buy it back for their regular amounts but those are two cameras that i wish i hadn't sold but if I was creating a new dream personal Leica kit, it would have two cameras, a film body and a digital body, and maybe two to three lenses. And that would be a wide angle lens, maybe a 28 millimeter or 21 millimeter, and then something like a 50 millimeter uh, to go along with that. Maybe a 35, I'm not quite sure, but it would be somewhere in that range, 21, 28, 35, or 50 millimeter lens. And do I see myself owning two Leicas and two to three lenses in the future, maybe. Th that would depend on, of course, how much money I'm making if I have that extra income because although Leicas can be used for professional work, especially um, their non-M cameras, those ones more so than the M cameras, the M cameras are really suited to specific styles of photography more than others. And cameras like the you know Sony A-series, those ones are, although they don't have the same tactile feel of a Leica M, they are much more capable, much more, I guess, versatile. You can do a lot more work with that and you can use Leica lenses with those if, the, if that's what your cup of tea is. But from my experience, from using all of, you know, all sorts of different cameras, the feel that I got with shooting a Leica, I've only shot film, I've only handled digital Leicas a few times in the past, but through shooting the film Leica cameras, it's really not like anything else that I've experienced. I've shot a lot of film with SLRs, I've owned a bunch of other rangefinders, and so even with that, even film versus film, the experiences are a little bit different, and there's just something about handling a Leica camera that gets me really excited, and again, for me, it's more than just the photography, it's more than just the image that you get out of that camera. It's it's the overall experience of of holding and using that camera. It's a little bit slower. Um, it takes a little bit more work, but to me, it's worth it. It's it's a it's really an experience shooting a Leica. So that is my personal dream kit: a digital Leica, a film Leica. With the film Leica, it would probably be something like an MP, so the most modern film uh, Leica, 
and the, I guess the most modern digital Leica is what I'd uh, like to have. So that's my dream kit for my personal photography. Leave yours down below and let's move on to the professional kit. So like I said earlier, I don't do too much professional work right now. I am slowly starting to do a little bit more and I'm slowly starting to embrace myself as a photographer because in the past I've always said that I took pictures. Um, I guess I was a photographer, but not a pro photographer. But um, recently I've tried to embrace that role a little bit more because a lot of people have been asking me to do uh, jobs here and there. and. Uh, in the past, I would turn those down. I would just tell them I'm not a pro. I just do photography for me. But now, you know, I want to hopefully offer my skills to someone else to help them um, get something out of it. So whether it's a portrait or whether it's um, photos for an event or something like that, the way I approach it now is that through through helping people out, through doing this work, this work and that work for other people, you know, it's not just for me, but I'm also helping them reach their goals or or reach what they want to uh, accomplish. So when I think about it that way, I'm more willing to offer uh, my services, my help, my photography, um, whether that is a one-time free gig or whether that is a paid uh, gig. I'm more open to doing that. So in this part, I want to talk about cameras that I've been sort of thinking about that would be cool to have for more professional work. For me, I'm really, right now at least, a Canon person. I've always liked Canon. Uh, I started off with Nikon or Nikon, however you want to pronounce it, and then I moved to Canon, and I loved Canon ever since. There are times when I try to see what other brands are doing, but at the end of the day, I'm very comfortable with what Canon's doing, uh, even though in some aspects they're not pushing the boundaries. What they are creating is pretty good, and they are creating some first. They are creating some cameras that are still on the top of their field. And my dream professional camera would be the Canon 1DX line of cameras. Right now, the one that's out is the 1DX Mark II, which is an amazing camera. It's a beast of a camera. That one... You know, I do not have reason to buy that camera right now. I do not do enough professional work, so I can't really justify that. But man, if I did more work and could justify that camera, I think that's the one that I would choose. Even more so than the uh, Nikon, the D5 or the D850 that's out. Uh, I really like that Canon 1DX Mark II. That's something that would be awesome to own. In addition to that, you know, I shoot Prime, so a whole set of primes, whether that is Canon or uh, Sigma, something like that, that would re be great. And a couple of zooms as well, maybe three zooms. That would make up a killer professional kit. Three primes, three zooms. You probably don't need anything more than that unless you are really shooting a lot of different types of work. So lastly, I'd like to talk about cameras that don't necessarily exist, something that I would like to see uh, for manufacturers. but. You know, the way things are going, manufacturers are creating such good cameras, uh, but very few are really pushing the boundaries uh, in terms of shifting from what they're already known for and just sort of building up from, you know, their foundation, which is totally fine. Um, it's just, um, you know, these cameras that I imagine might not come as soon as we'd like, but we are definitely going to see these in the future. So... The things that I like from a professional, from a, from a dream camera, a camera that had it all, is first, a small but comfortable camera body. Something in the Sony A-series line of cameras, that size, so the A7 or the A9, uh, that size of body. You know, with a grip, it can be a little bit bigger, but that would be an awesome, awesome size for a camera. The next thing that I'd want is a lot of battery life. So a lot of people overlook this, but it is a big issue right now with a lot of mirrorless cameras. They don't have amazing battery life. So I'd want for sure battery life, good battery life, batteries that could last a whole day of shooting and, you know, a, a majority of the day if you're shooting video. Something like that would be awesome. And I wish camera manufacturers would focus a little bit more on just adding better batteries. Even if that made the camera a little bit thicker, a little bit bigger, a little bit chunkier, I think that people would prefer that overall instead of having to switch cameras or batteries all throughout the day. Because with some of these brands, you almost have to get the battery grip to get those additional batteries because if you just switch out batteries in a, you know an hour, it might be dead. 
if you're shooting a lot. So big battery, that's awesome. The next thing I'd prefer it to be is a mirrorless camera. So I do prefer mirrorless over digital uh, in terms of theory, but in terms of current application, I feel that DSLRs are still smoother in terms of autofocus, speed, just the way things flow, things move. From my experience with mirrorless cameras, autofocus, accuracy, and speed, it's getting a lot better, but it's still a little bit jumpy compared to uh, DSLRs. So when DSLRs can move, or when mirrorless cameras can move to almost DSLR-like autofocus abilities in terms of speed, accuracy, and just the flow of it, you know, the uh, smoothness of it, uh, then we really have something great. And cameras are getting there. The Sony, again, the Sony cameras are getting better. The new Fuji cameras with the newer lenses aren't as uh, skippy as the old ones, so they're getting there as well. Panasonic and um, Olympus have been killing it with the um, Micro Four Thirds for a long time, but those sensors are a little bit smaller. Uh, so I, you know, I've considered them in the past, but they're not my favorite cameras uh, right now. And then apart from those things, just all of the different bells and whistles. So the manual focus features that you get that make it amazing for DS for for video. Um, you know, of course, a nice lens lineup. Um, what else? Wi-Fi, good Wi-Fi and a good app to go with it. Those are just some small things that I'd like in a camera. And right now the camera brand that's getting closest to that is of course Sony. Uh, there's still things that I'd like to see. Big battery, but I know that that camera, it's mirrorless. It uses a lot of battery, so can't really fault them on that and they are improving over the years. But, you know, something like I described would be an amazing, amazing camera. So that's the topic for today. Again, make sure to leave your comments down below as to what your favorite cameras are. I'll be sure to check those out. I'll comment, I'll reply to your comments and um, give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't yet. I have a new goal to reach 100,000 subscribers, hopefully by the end of the year. So go subscribe if you haven't yet. Share this video with as many people as you can. It'll really help out the channel grow and I'll see you guys in the next one.